Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and today I want to go over how to assign inputs from your mouse and keyboard to your RPG developer backing game. In a previous video, I went over how to assign joypad inputs, but there's a lot of new information here that I didn't cover in the last video, so stick around. I'll also put a link to the RPG developer Bakking wiki, specifically the assign input device page. A smile boom does a great job of explaining exactly how all of this works. And I'm basically just going to be going over this page to show you these examples in action. Now to actually assign your inputs in your project, you're going to go over to the game definition menu on the left hand side of the screen under master menu, and then you will go to rules and operations. There's a lot of very helpful project settings here, but we're going to be looking at the right side of the screen under assign input device. If this looks like a bunch of big scary code, don't worry, you can't mess anything up because you can just hit this restore default settings button and it will all come back. Also, you may notice how there is a nice helpful line number in front of every single line of code. And if you put anything in wrong or weird on any particular line number, let's say in this case line 38, and try to test play, the compiler will simply give you an error message saying that that line was invalid so it was ignored. The rest of the script will be executed executed and you can continue to play. Finally, before we begin, the assign input device function is at version 1.2 as of the time of this video's recording. There may be future updates to this system, and if there are, I'll try my best to cover them. So Smileboom have released the entire list of different inputs that we can use, which pretty much encompasses the entire keyboard and every button on a standard mouse, as well as all of the joypad inputs that I went over in a previous video. But they also do an excellent job of explaining exactly what everything in this code means. So just taking a look at this more readable sample description code, first line is the version definition here, and that should be left just as it is. The next line has two forward slashes followed by the word walk. Two consecutive slashes make a comment line. The compiler is going to ignore anything after this line. It is meant for comments in the code. You can see here that Smileboom uses comment lines to section this code off into different categories for us. And you can use these comment lines to write notes to yourself as well. Next, lines beginning with a colon are the lines that describe the scene, or the scene label, in which the definitions after this line will be used. Walk means a scene where the player can walk. Menu is the scene where the player is accessing the menu. Put simply, all of the controls under a scene label that are defined will work for that scene only. Just to kind of over explain it a bit, when you are on the map scene and you press left, your character will walk left. If you press right, your character will walk right. That's because the keys for walking left and right have been bound to those actions. However, when you access the menu, all of that goes out the window. Now when you press left, your character doesn't walk left, the cursor will move left if it can. And if you press right, the cursor will move right. Next is the meat and potatoes of this whole tutorial. Lines beginning with bind are input definition lines. This means that this line is assigning the W and up arrow keys to the up input type. That is our action. Basically, bind this action in the engine with these two keys. And this is important, you can see that they are separated by comma. In this way, you can assign two different inputs to this action, this input type. Going over the next line, you can see that bind assigns down to the S and down arrow keys, bind assigns right to the D and right arrow keys, and assigns left to the A and left arrow keys. While you can assign multiple inputs to an input type, or action, you can only assign them to one action per line. Now we've gone over joypad inputs, but just in case you haven't seen that video, I'll go over this really quick. The bind line may contain numbers, but the numbers are the coefficients of the analog sticks and other inputs. In this case, it means multiplying the stick tilt by 1.0 for the pad left thumb Y plus. In other words, when the gamepad's left stick Y axis is tipped in the plus direction. If that plus direction meets that 1.0 position, your character will move up. Lines beginning with dead zone are thresholds for analog sticks and other inputs. In this case, pad left thumb, the gamepad left stick, means to ignore tilts up to 0.3. Anything at 0.3 or under is in the dead zone. There are a number of tables on this page of the wiki. This one describes the current scene labels, and this one, which is very important, describes the input type list. These are all of the actions that we have access to in the events of our 
RPG Developer Bakin project. We can also check for any or all of these inputs using our event panels. So checking to see if a player is near a mineable node, and then checking to see if they've hit the action button, which in our game could mean that the player is using a pickaxe to mine. These input types have to be typed out exactly as they are here, or copied and pasted, they are case sensitive. Next is the key codes list. These keys can be assigned. All of them do not support analog values. These do have to be typed or copied and pasted as they appear here, they are case sensitive. So if you would like to assign an action to the space key, for example, then you would type space and you would make sure you had a capital S. You can see that we can use just about every single key on our standard Windows keyboard. The number row is referred to as alpha zero through alpha nine, and all of the letter keys are present, as well as left window right windows, all of the number pad keys from 0 to 9, number pad multiply, add, enter, minus, period, and divide, even all of the F keys. And of course we've got number lock, scroll lock, left shift, right shift, left control, right control, left alt, and right alt. Now again, even though we have access to all of the keys on a keyboard, we can't make them all do unique things just yet. Right now we can only assign them to these exact input types. As of version 1.2, you can't check to see if the H key, for example, is pressed in your project, but you can assign the H key to the jump action, and you can check to see if the jump action is being performed in your project. Next is the complete list of gamepad input codes, and this includes the thumb, X and Y, pluses and minuses for the left and right sticks. This table also shows you which inputs are supportive of analog values, noted by a Y in the third column. Finally, on the wiki page, we have the list of mouse input codes. This is something I did not go over in a previous video. This will actually let you assign the mouse position X and Y to different actions, as well as the mouse button L, R, the wheel being pressed in, the mouse wheel being rotated up or down, the mouse wheel being rotated up only or down only. Using the mouse input codes list with the input type list, camera vertical and horizontal rotation commands, you could use the event panels to tie the mouse position to the camera and have a camera that's controlled by the mouse, even in third person. You can also assign combinations of inputs to input types. For example, lines 42 through 44 have combinations of buttons that must be input together before these actions are carried out. Here we see bind camera vertical rotation up, which will only happen if the mouse Y position increases while the mouse right button is held. In other words, moving the mouse by itself does nothing, but if I hold down the right mouse button and move the Y position of the mouse upwards or positive, camera will rotate down. If you'd like for your player to have inverted mouse controls, you can change this. But you'll see that in order to make a combination of keys affect the input, you just link them with a plus sign. I'm actually going to take all of the right mouse button inputs out on just these lines. I want to be able to move my camera without holding down the right mouse button. So hit apply and then OK, then hit test play. And now, yeah, by default, my mouse does control the camera. I don't have to hold anything down. It's a really disorienting and pretty wild. It's actually kind of a nauseating example, but it can be done. Something that the wiki doesn't explain well right now. On line 60 of our assign input device code, we see bind touch with mouse button L. We see it again on line 107 under the menu scene bind touch mouse button L. What does this mean? Well, that's easy enough. You can assign the touch input and the mouse coordinates will be captured whenever the user left clicks on something. If I click on status, for example, the cursor will move immediately to status. I don't have to use the arrow keys to navigate there at all. I can click on map, save, and if I click on the button while the cursor is already there, I access the save menu. You can check to see if the touch input is being triggered on your events too. In that way, making your events clickable instead of having your characters have to walk up to them, press any sort of action button. That's it for this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. And just as an aside, I have requested that Smileboom give us more actions. If you look at lines 80 through 85 in the input device code, you will see references to actions and you can check to see if these are being pressed in your events to do different things like examine or carry out entirely new events that you create. But the problem is we only have three. I've asked that they provide us with something like, say, four through 99, so that we can truly make every key on our keyboard, every input on our mouse, and every input on our controller unique and assignable to special functions that we can create. So that's it for now. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Please comment down below how I am doing with these tutorials, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.